Last October, I made a video where I built a replica of the Omnitrix from the live-action made-for-TV movie, Ben 10 Race Against Time. It is, to this date, my most viewed video on the channel. In lieu of that, the comments suggesting it, and the fact that this version of the Omnitrix is my favorite version, this month on DIY Prop Culture Builds, we build the Omnitrix from Ben 10 Aliens. Five years after the conclusion of Ben 10 Classic, a 15-year-old Ben is a regular teenager in small-town Bellwood, until the DNA aliens invade. In reaction to this, Ben takes the Omnitrix out of retirement and gets a sleek, shiny new upgrade for the second and more mature show, Ben 10 Alien Force. Due to this show's success, a sequel for the first live-action movie was funded. Taking place between seasons 2 and 3 of Alien Force, the movie follows Ben as he reunites with his old flame in the form of the Exile of Elena Validus to fight up an invasion of alien nanorobots called the Chips. Okay, so the plot maybe wasn't super cool, but that wasn't the draw to the movie. The draw was... well, I'll just show you. To any 10-year-old kid watching the premiere like I did, this was the highlight of Thanksgiving weekend. Anyways, enough gushing over childhood memories. But for materials, you'll need green duct tape, electrical tape, aluminum tape, modeling clay, hot glue, a quarter-inch dowel, and two strips of Velcro. The comment suggested that I use EVA foam. Although that seemed like a good idea, it just wasn't as durable as I would have liked. First, You'll want to model the dial out of clay. I would have tried to make this spin like I failed to do last year, but that would have made this way too bulky, and the 2.0 model of the Omnitrix is always supposed to appear sleek. Once the dial is modeled, feel free to model the base disc that will act as the main part of the wristband. This piece will be the same thickness as the dial, at a little over half an inch, but it will be wider in diameter. It will have two small cutouts at the top and bottom. Now take the dowel and use it to push it through these cutouts. Once this dries, remove the dowel and use it to make the pegs on either side of the Omnitrix base. Now get out the hot glue and use it to slowly model the segments of the wristband that will fit onto this base. This part was not that easy and took some trial and error, but once it sits on the wrist comfortably, use the duct tape to form the rest of the wristband. Cover the entire piece, except for the pegs and a layer of green duct tape. 90 degrees from these pegs, either side of the base, be very careful to model two semi-rectangular triggers in the sides of the watch. Make sure there is some raised space between them and the band itself, as to mimic the shape of the real prop. This is where the cartoon and live-action Omnitrixes differ. Where the live-action prop has very thin buttons and band heads that attach smoothly at a slight angle to the base, the cartoon one has very thick buttons and the band flares out at the base. This is something to keep in mind if you want to make an Omnitrix that is more accurate to the show than the film. Cut out two corresponding segments of Velcro and then attach them to the Omnitrix's wristband where they'll be needed. Use the electric tape to make the black streaks across the band and make sure to stop just shy of the gap. But also to be mindful to line them up with the triggers correctly. This not only makes the prop more accurate to the real one, but also helps to mask the velcro fasteners at the bottom as they are the same color. Make a circular base from folding and cutting a circle out of green tape, and then use two wedges of the electric tape to make the Omnitrix symbol. Once this is done, 
Use the hot glue to form a glossy bead over the symbol. Make sure not to make it too thick or it, or it will come out foggy and you'll have to repeat this step like I did. As the penultimate step, use the aluminum tape to chrome the dial, the pegs, and the triggers. Although it's pretty much impossible to make the tape lay perfectly flat on these surfaces, make sure that they're at least as flat as possible to make them appear close to polished metal. Now that all the pieces are created, the final step is to glue the dial to the wristband and the face to the dial. And now you have your very own Omnitrix. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this prop and you built along, I'd love to see it. So make sure to post it on Instagram and tag me so that I can find it. If you have a prop suggestion, leave it in the comments below. And finally, if you like this video and you want to see more, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.